All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an NPC or monster. Uh, I'm using Foundry version 12, and we're using the beta 0.8 rules. All right, we start with going to the Actors tab and uh, creating an actor. This is going to be called Monster. And make sure the type is NPC, so non-player character. Now you'll see that the NPC sheet is different from the player sheet. It's uh, much more compact. Um, it's only got a, a couple of tabs. This was the main one that you'll want. Then of course there's the effects tab and then uh, a notes tab, so to speak. And they call it journal, so you can write about the monster if you need. There is this little arrow to the left hand side, just like the character sheet that opens up uh, the avatar and, and your defenses and so on. And this one still does change to the other abilities you can do from your skills and so on, which is handy. So, of course, one of the reasons why the sheet is so much smaller is because as a DM, you don't want near as much detail as player characters do because uh, when you're running a multiple monsters in a, in, a, in a large battle, you want to be able to quickly decide what the monsters can do. So the less amount of abilities, really, the better. Uh, I mean, within reason, you want to have a couple things that are fun, but uh, you do want to make it short and easy to use uh, because the player's turns always take, you know, one or two minutes. As a DM, you want your monsters to take like 20 seconds or less uh, so the game continues to flow. Okay, so obviously you do have to go into the edit mode, which is the edit tab here. Uh, for this point, uh, this is how you change the action points is in this number here. Usually it defaults to four. If you're doing like a minion or whatever, like the one hit point minions, you can change that to two. It'll act just the same as your character sheets do. Um, your hit points, you can change it right here. Again, if it's a minion, you can put it to one. It doesn't automatically change the left hand side. So you may need to change that afterwards or whatnot. But uh, you can change the hit points manually to that whatever you like. Um, the, uh, the coach has obviously the monster PDF that if you're part of the uh, Kickstarter that you would have and it's actually a pretty good he's done a really good job with uh, how to build monsters balanced. I really recommend you to take a look at it if you haven't already. This plus by the way adds resources for example if it is a boss monster and you want to have a legendary action and there's no currently no default to legendary actions on here which is fine because not many monsters many monsters should have it you can add that resource right here so you can change an image to whatever you want uh i'm just going to make the, the foundry anvil here and here is the cog wheel where you would change what the actual thing is called legendary maybe i spelled the wrong who knows have yeah, three legendaries reset on a round round end so resets update so there you go you've got your legendary actions or whatever resources else that you're you're tracking but that's just uh you know the most common example over here is your stats uh like to note if you change the stats here it does change your save dc and the attack check and so on right um but it does uh it doesn't change your physical defense so you know i put three in agility it should change the defense it didn't oh right here's also the uh, level of the monster as well which might be a good idea and that is of course your combat mastery and uh, it defaults to half of the level of zero one oops of course if you change it to let's say a level four monster it'll automatically change the combat mastery as well change the uh checks and saves and so on so that is already automated 41 whoops so changing these skills again won't change anything i'll put that as a one uh, won't change anything over here uh, but it does change your checks and saves you can override this by the way by clicking uh, these little boxes here so if you want to change it to the from the default, you can go in here and say, oh, I'm actually going to make it a five or something, uh, or your save DC, I'm going to make it a, a, a 12, make it lower. From my experience though, 
uh, for making monsters in, in combat. Actually, these are the defaults are quite balanced. But this is where, if you were going to modify it, that's where you would do. This role menu works almost the exact same way as in the player one. You add or add help dice or advantage and disadvantage, and these are for the skill checks of the monster or the saving throws. Again, the same way if you click on the little shield, it gives them save, uh, save mastery on that saving throw. These also very mental save. It'll take the best out of these two. Uh, physical save will take the best out of might and agility. Uh, martial check will take the best out of acrobatics and athletics. Um, these are in alphabetical order, unlike conditions, which is really nice, nice to find. And uh, same with you know the advantages here. Uh, it doesn't work for down in this area. We'll get to this area last because it's the most detailed. But these ones will have their own little menu, just like in your character sheet under spells and weapons and so on. They'll have their own little menu underneath it. Uh, damage reduction, this eye uh, shows all the empty ones and the unclick the eye and it shrinks it down. Same thing like the skills you'll see right now, it defaults to open, but if you click that, it'll go to, well, I didn't, we didn't pick any. So if you do pick some, then uh, when you close it, it goes down to whatever ones that you've, you've picked. Uh, monsters uh, can go past the, you know, the default um, level, you know, Player characters, for the most part, if they're level one, they can't get really past uh, novice. But monsters, you can set it to however way you want it, and it'll it'll change it. Uh, damage reduction. So there are five different ways of damage reduction in DC twenty. So they combined almost the D and D part of vulnerability and resistance, and then they added the uh, vulnerability and resistance from Pathfinder as well as numbers. So vulnerability, this one is if it's it does double damage and you just click it on or off, it'll do double damage against these uh, types. If you hover over the icon, uh, it tells you what type of damage that is. This one here is vulnerability of a number. So if you put in uh, one fire, that means it'll reduce fire damage by one. So, no, increase, sorry. <laughs> this is vulnerability. This is an increase. This one is the opposite. This is resistance. So it's a, it can be resistance to slashing one, and that'll remove a hit point of that. And then this one is half damage. Uh, so like the D&D half damage, you click there, you'll take half damage of Radiant. Uh, they even also stack, by the way. So if it is vulnerability and a vulnerability one, it will actually do the math properly when you apply the damage. Uh, so when you do your attack and you apply the damage to this monster, you'll look at the types and it will apply the appropriate damage reduction or increase if it's a vulnerability. And this final one is, of course, immune, immunity. So and uncheck the eyes, it'll only def it'll go down to the ones that you've picked. Uh, custom immunities, this is for the different conditions. Uh, again, it is not in alphabetical order. So, uh, but this is the advantage level um, where you would put in. So if if they are uh, adva advantage on charm uh, effects, you put that there. Uh, it does not, this one does not automate. So this just reminds you that there is, you know, this one has a double advantage on bleeding. And this one here is complete immunity for the condition. So again, not automated. And I don't know if there's even a way that you could, uh, because there's so many different ways that you can get advantages and disadvantage that uh, I, I don't think it would be possible to to automate that. All right, for, so for skills, we've already done skills. Languages, same exact same thing as your player character one. Um, two levels, and, you know, the L does the, the check part. So puts it in the chat there, the Dwarvis check for languages shrink it down so you can't see it uh let's go to the left hand side here so to change your physical defense you just edit the number and change it it's that simple um if you again it does have to be in edit mode as a reminder uh, these are the exhaustion levels now of course um exhaustion levels don't go down um for because usually for monsters if they go down to zero they they don't know die so, but that's up to you. Of course, you can always change that. 
but uh, monsters normally, if you're down to zero, they're dead. There's no real, you know, threshold. I mean, that, that's not, uh, that, that death store thing is for heroes and players, not for monsters. So it would be really annoying for, um, for players if, uh, monsters didn't die at zero, to be honest, and a little bit unbalancing. You know, damage reduction right here, you can just change the number and it'll, uh, It'll automatically remove the damage reduction. Uses the damage reduction rules as well when it comes to um, if it's a hit, it'll remove it. If it's a heavy hit, it'll ignore it. Uh, jump distance, ground speed, all that kind of stuff. Uh, climbing speed. You can just go in here. And unlike the player character where you had to go in the cogwheel, here you can just, just change the number. And it'll, it'll do it. So again, these don't automate from your might and so on. These are numbers that you would uh, you would have to go in and change yourself because monsters do not follow the same rules as players. So that's an important thing to think about. Size, uh, again, changing the size does not change your token. So here I said that the token is large, but here it puts it as one and one. And also remember, unlike D&D, &D, you can have different widths and heights right uh like a brontosaurus isn't just a round gargantuan you know four by four hex like it is in D, &D. it has a different height and weight so or weight, a width and height so this is where you would change this in here just just remember that that it doesn't auto change and it shouldn't because the dimensions are are um so different than they are in D, &D. here's creature type if you put in right now the creature types don't really have any really Rules attached to it at 0 0.8, but I'm sure they could in the meantime. So that's why it is currently not even a, a box to be able to, to a checkbox or a radio box or anything like that, because we don't know what all the types are going to be. So, um, I mean, but well, you can put them in there for reminders, or maybe in the future you'll think that they'll actually, they'll actually have this. Uh, so uh, let's say construct, let's say, or whatever. Here's the visions. So unlike the character sheets on the players, you can just go in here and change the vision. If you hover over it, it'll tell you, uh, you know, what it is, dark vision, tremor sense. Again, it does not change it in the token. So that is something that uh, you will have to change yourself in the vision part or the detection mode, very much like the player characters one. So this will not automatically change the actual token vision. Uh, all right, let's go the best for last. This is the, the one that people also have the most difficulty doing, and that's the actions and so on. So uh, this monster is going to, you know, let's make a, a, a claw attack. Now, the one thing I really like about this is that when you're adding an item, it doesn't really matter what you add is. I, I always add them as features to begin with, to be honest. And then when I change, this is going to be a uh, bite, let's say. And I can change my icon to a uh, to something other than that. What have I got here? Creatures, abilities. There's a nice. There we go. Uh, so description. This is what you would manually put in. This is the description. Of course, that doesn't actually do anything other than uh, when you hover your mouse over it, it tells you on the left hand side. configuration so this is if you're you know when you're creating a feature like if it's a subclass feature or whatever that's what you would you would what type it would be honestly in a monster I just leave it blank um this is where you would mark it as a reaction though uh, so when you do that you'll see that it'll have like the reaction symbol on it and that again it doesn't do anything in the software it just reminds you that that is a reaction and that, and that helps um so this is the this is the need of it right here. The roll tab has four other tabs. So the type of attack. So dynamic saves. Those are if you make a check and then they have to make a save against it, and it it depends on what um, what you roll. So for example, the target you know you're making an attack check, or you can do like a spell check or whatever. Uh, you can manually put in extra bonuses in here if you want. Normally the rest of it is already built in. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to do that. Then you can put it against what its defense is. Uh, half on a miss, crit threshold. Now this is the important part too, is what I said it was a dynamic save. So that means whatever your spell check, whatever your role is, is what they have to save against. So here is the 
physical, mental, which is physical is your best between might and agility. Mental is your best between charisma and intelligence. Of course, there's might and agility, intelligence, and charisma, or whatever. Saving throw. Defaults to your spell casting difficulty class, but you can change it to, you know, your martial check, which is your better between advantage and disadvantage. And you can even make a flat check so you can actually put your manual amount in. Now, most of the time, it is just going to be an attack. Uh, but it could be like, you know, a contest, uh, like for grappling, let's say. I mean, that's already in there, but it'll be a martial check against their physical save or, or whatever, however you want to build it. But most of the time, you guys are looking for attacks. And it's mostly against physical defense. So, uh, and this is where you would add your combat mastery in it or not. But uh, again, normally, if you're just doing a monster from scratch, that defaults to on and it should most likely stay on unless you're trying to fine tune something. Type of damage. Well, you add a little plus. You put in how much damage it does, and you put in the type of damage. It's that easy. Uh, you can do multiple ones as well. So let's say it does two piercing, and it also does one acid. Or, oh, not called acid in this game, sorry. Corrosion. And it'll have two separate lines for that, but uh, when you apply the damage, but it's there. This is if you're adding healing. Uh, so if you have an ability that heals, uh, and then it, your choices are health or temporary health, depending on what that ability does. And then there's a custom formula, which, uh, quite honestly, is beyond me. So <laughs> if it's, I haven't really played with that, and uh, I don't know, uh, and I'm sorry, but I don't actually know what extra things you can do uh, in that. So let me just uh, add that. It's supposed to be one slashing, let's say. Usage cost. This is important. This is how many actions or stamina or mana or health it takes to use this attack. Now, a lot of the times it'll be default just one action point. However, um, it might take more. Here's a very important thing to know. Stamina and mana are not on monsters, NPCs. NPCs do not have stamina or mana. Just I will repeat it just to make sure it's very clear. NPCs do not have stamina or mana. So spells and so on aren't actual, you know, they don't take up mana for NPCs. This type of resource management isn't needed when you're making a monster against, uh, you know, against players. You want to keep it as simple as possible. And that's why it's done and that's why it should be. So interesting also, if something gives back, uh, you can put a negative number in here. So if like a heal spell or, or some sort, again, not spells, but if you make an action, if you use this, use it as an action or whatever and gives you back a health or whatever, that, that's how that it is. So this is the cost. So negative cost brings something back. Charges, in, ca in case you're actually making, I'll do another video on item creation, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, a lot of maybe main special abilities that take like three actions to do and uh, they can only do it once per combat or something, right? So um, there we go. So once the combat starts, they can use it. So this will be once per combat. You have to turn that on, by the way. Oh, wait, no, that's the re recovery formula. Never mind. I'm, I'm wrong. And uh, this area, I honestly... <laughs> Again, it's a more advanced than than what I'm, what I really even have knowledge about. Target. Now, this filling this out is handy, but it does not do anything automated in the software. But it's extremely handy because it shows up in your tooltip, right? So uh, again. You know, if it's a long range, it should have disadvantage, but the software doesn't know all the different things to, to automate for advantage and disadvantage. And quite honestly, if some things were automated for advantage and disadvantage and some things weren't, that would be more confusing. So it's better just to handle the advantage and disadvantage itself and uh, not have, um, not try to put that in in any way because it, it would just be too much. Uh, duration, concentration, Let's say, again, the when you use these abilities, if it does require concentration, it does currently does not put the concentration condition on you. Uh, however, again, putting all this information, just all it does is it puts it up in the tooltip. You see that? So it's handy as a DM because maybe you forget if, you know, that does these trolls claws? Do they have reach or whatever? That's how you can just quickly put it in there 
so you can on a tool tip see see what it is so it is still very handy and it just doesn't do any sort of automations now this is a big one enhancements this is let's say this person's bite does also poison damage or something or you can trip with it uh, now let's put in trip because you can put in whatever you want in there right? and you hit the plus button it makes a little trip thing here you can put in the costs again uh, no stamina or mana for NPCs. You put in like a one cost for trip. And let's say it uh, you go, it does a physical save. So you say override, physical save defaults to your to Marshall. Sounds great. Perfect. We'll keep it that way. Uh, you may want to even add, let's say it's a poison effect. So we can add in poison. And uh, did I, oh, didn't, maybe I didn't hit the right button. Poison plus, there we go. So let's say poison, you don't, you know, have an action cost. It's just, it, it's part of the attack. Then you don't put any sort of resource in here. And then you just do the other side. I'm going to make it a uh, might, might save, right? So against the poison. So with that uh, done, there's also an advanced tab. This is when it gets into applying um, temporary, uh, temporary or passive effects. This is something that is um, would need a whole new video talking about the different uh, uh, automated effects and so on that you can do in here. For example, like when you pick a class and it you know it lowers your or increases your mental defense automatically, or whatever. These are all using these um, advanced effects, uh, active effects that that really make the the software very powerful. But uh, to go into real detail of it, uh, it would definitely require another video, which I'm prepared to do, of course. So with all that done, when you actually now use the bite attack, lower it down. Here's the trip where you would put it in, you know, if you're putting an extra action point to do it. Um, for monster creation, I always advise if it's doing something extra, shoving, tripping, um, knocking back, it should have an action cost. A grapple. Should have an action cost. If it's something that happens, you know, if it's a paralyzed effect after the tentacle hits or whatever, in my opinion, it shouldn't have an active cost. It's something that just, it's not something they can turn on and off. So but you do have to actually put that in there to, to do the, to make the save go up. And it's also handy because, for example, if a ghoul bites you and you're paralyzed, there's no sense putting that, you know, and it keeps biting you. There's no sense putting that in there for the, for the save to come up. These are bit all the same as when it comes to players, uh, you know, flanking, half cover, free cost, full cover, all that type of stuff. Put an advantage, put in a help die, put in a trip, make the attack. Of course, it doesn't have, I didn't target anyone, so it doesn't really show, but I'll go into some pre-made monsters for a minute. Um, when you, if you're making a monster and it has a weapon attack, I want to have a, a, a little warning, so to speak, for weapons or for armor. Oh, I can turn that, sorry, click and drag that into action so you can do that. So you can put them in, like if, that's why I always make everything a feature and then I default it, then I move it to actions, to be honest. And so if it's a feature like a, a parry or defense, I keep it in features. If it's an action, like something you would actually, you know, attack with or whatever I put up there, but you, you guys do you. Anyway, what I was talking about is if you actually grab a sword, um, for example, um, Monsters shouldn't get the special abilities of that weapon. I mean, you can do it. I'm not saying, you know, that uh, that's against the rules or anything like that. It's just that usually, like, for example, the guard and the impact part of a short sword, um, that's usually for players. And it might be, you know, you might in, it might be unintended to do more than it should uh, when, you're, when you're attacking players with it. So just be wary if you're grabbing weapons or or anything like that into there, that uh, if I equip it, um, it will actually change my physical defense. Uh, and if I, because it's an impact weapon, if I hit above a hit, it will, if it, you know, a brutal hit above, or a heavy hit or above, it will add the extra damage. So just, just be aware that it might be easier um, for you to just create it from scratch. Because, uh, I mean, for example, I'm going to open up the uh, hunted PDF here. And you'll see what the coach did 
uh, when it comes to like Raven or, 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 or whatnot, right? Her attack, dagger, one slashing, crossbow, one piercing. Doesn't say heavy hit, you know, any of the extra stuff in it. In fact, crossbow only does one damage instead of the two. This is by design, right? These are not player characters. These are people that your characters are supposed to be able to defeat. So adding all that extra weapon stuff is normally not intended. Uh, same with the special abilities. If you're grabbing special abilities from classes, just remember that those class abilities are usually more powerful than what a monster should have and also more, um, more complicated than what a monster should have. Monsters should have something very simple. Or taking dis disengage action, moving two spaces. That's nice. That's simple. That's easy. That's not like the you know the, the what the rogues get, which you know is like half a page long of the different things they can do. Monsters don't need to do that. Same thing with your grabbing spells. Um, if you are just kind of defaulting grabbing some spells, please be aware that one, there's no mana, right? There's no mana. Uh, NPCs do not have that. And also, all these extra abilities are redundant. Uh, they don't have mana. I mean, you might want to... I mean, I'm sometimes lazy, and uh, I will edit the... I will grab a spell, and I'll come in here, and I will change the uh, cost of it to, like, not have mana. And then I will go into the enhancements. You see the burning effect in there, and maybe I'll just change that to a mana instead. Just be aware of what you're, you're doing with that because all these special things uh, don't make it too complicated when you're a when you're a DM trying to use monsters against a party. So, and also got to remember this also burning effect and range effect. These aren't things that the players will be able to do normally, right? I mean, a fireball spell, which is let's face it, that's a sphere when you add range. Um, Players aren't going to be able to do that at level one because that's normally a one mana cost. So if you're putting level one monster, these may not be available or maybe shouldn't be available because you may be making them a little bit too powerful. So you can always hit the, you know, minus sign to delete them. Also, then I would not put them in spells. I would put them over. I would drag them and put them in actions. Oh, it won't let me. Hmm. Oh, there it did. I just wasn't. I didn't click hard enough. Uh... So now, now it's in there. All this, this description, of course, is redundant because it's not the actual spell. So, you know, I wouldn't need this man enhancements part so I can just delete it, make it a little bit easier on me uh, when I am running this monster in a combat. Uh, so let's also just, as a reminder, in the compendium packs, there are five monsters to look at uh, that uh, will... Give you some idea of how it's built and there's absolutely nothing wrong with grabbing one of these monsters and uh taking their effects and moving into the other monster like i like how that sweep worked so you can just click and drag it into that action so now you have the sweep that coach build directly into the monster that you are making um but there are good examples i mean it, it's sad that there's only five but uh if you have the if you have version eight of the DC 20 foundry system. You also do have the, the hunted one shot. Uh, we can take a look at the monsters that, uh, that we built in there. So one shot, I've already obviously imported it. Click on the hunted, import the adventure, and then you should be able to take a look at how the Krasis and the rival party that they made and how it was built, for example, Nightmare, it does talk about spell casting, how uh, NPC, even though without mana, uh, says in the tooltip there that they can still do spell duels or spell duels can use against them. Um, somatic Shatter, you know, not really a spell because they don't have mana, but um, it's still a spell attack and so on and can be can be used against, against players. So that's in there. And this Arcane Signal is a little bit different, of course, than the, is it watered down version? of what uh, wizards can do. So again, this is a good example of uh, shouldn't have as many abilities or features as PCs. So take a look at how they were built. And uh, look, that one knuckle has a grapple one and it does cost an extra mana. So, or mana, a extra action. So you can put in there for the extra action. You'll see that the Crassus has got legendary actions up here to be able to use. 
Um, I'm actually curious. I'm going to edit this because I want to see. Can I use legendary actions in the cost? I don't think I can. Oh, yes, you can right there. So look at that. So if you add a legendary action, it's just a good example. It could be whatever the heck you want to put in there. But uh, monsters do have legendary. Uh, some monsters do have legendary actions. You can actually put the costs in there of the legendary action instead. Uh, and now it'll show up right there. Um, it'll cost legendary action. Actually, I should you know put it in an actual action. But you get the idea. So you can actually spend these things and then it uses up one of the legendary actions. As soon as I click that die, it uses up one of the legendary actions. So that's good to know. So I hope you found this video useful. And uh, have a great time. I'll see you next time.